Hey everybody, it's uh, Tracy here and I'm here to bring you another trading view quick tip. Now, I am one of the mentors over at uh, Real Life Trading, so if you're interested in uh, learning more about how we trade and some of the things that we have to offer, check us out at reallifetrading.com and uh, let's dive into today's topic, which is screeners. I get a lot of questions about uh, how I screen for my gaps. And I, uh, I use my, um, my actual broker to, to do most of it, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it in TradingView. And it's, it's, I think it's decent. It's a decent scanner. It's not always accurate, um, but nothing is. So I find that uh, even in my broker, when I look at some stocks, it says that it's down, but maybe it's up and things are changed. So sometimes the data is delayed. But anyway, let's dive into this. So in TradingView, if you go down to the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see Stock Screener. You click on it, and I have a post-market gappers that I've, I've created so far, and I've got a pre-market gapper as well that I'll show you the settings for that. But when you're setting up your, your screeners, you can just go over into the filters. And uh, the settings that I have for the post-market filter, I have the average volume, and I set it to between 750K and 50 million. Um, I make sure that I have something for my post market change percent and this is what's going to give you the gapper. Now I select outside and I go from negative 2 to 2. So anything outside of negative 2% and lower, so a gap down that's lower than negative that's lower than 2% and a gap up that's greater than 2% is going to show up. I choose my exchange. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I I just might as well filter out the stuff that I'm not going to use. And then I choose common stock because I don't typically trade on the ETFs. Now, if you want to, you can you can select any of these, um, your depository re receipts, your ETFs, and your preferred stock. I just stick to common stock for just to make it easy. But like I said, you can pick whatever you want. The, the primary thing that you need here is the post-market change. And then I select the price between $5 and $250. And again, you can you can change that to whatever fits your need. Once you've got all those settings, you can get rid of any of the other settings. Now, if you want to get rid of a setting, you just click this little uh, reset button and it'll eliminate it and set it back to new and it will no longer be one of your, your settings. Click on the X and then once you've got that, you can go into, let's just see, click on the name again, screens, and then save screen as, pick your name and then click save and then it'll be permanently in your list. Now, if you can see, so this is a post market gap list. And it's going to reset every every few seconds, or if I can click here, every 10 seconds, it's going to refresh on me. And you can make um, a change to manual free refresh, which we'll do right now. So if we want to just do a manual refresh, that way we can take a look at this without it continually changing on us. You can set it as a every minute or 10 seconds. I usually have it on 10 seconds because I want to have quick refresh rate, but we'll just leave it on manual refresh for now so you can take a look and, and see how accurate or un inaccurate this is. So right now this is showing that there's 10 matches, common stock, and if we look at the first one, TPIC, it says it's up 2.66%. That's the post market gap percent, up 2.6. So let's click on it and see how accurate this is. You can see right here that it is 2.66. It's just a little tick up here. And if you're interested in finding ones that have more volume, in the post market, then we can change that in the settings. And I'll show you that in the pre-market setup that I have because I do look for a specific amount of volume pre-market, not just a, a gap. So anyway, you can see that this is accurate. It's showing that it is gapping up. Let's look at APVO. We've got a 3.29% gap, which is accurate. And price is up 3.29%, or sorry, down 3.29%. The next one's root, and I'm pretty sure this one's inaccurate. So it says it's 6.29 and this one here shows that it's 0.24 up. So this is one that's not accurate. It's obviously delayed data on it. Um, not delayed data because of my package, but it's just the whoever's getting the data from TradingView is delayed in their, in their um, notifications on it. So 2.14 down, this matches 2.14 down. Revlon gapping up 2.2, this is accurate. EDRY gapping down 2.83, also accurate. KCAC also gapping down. Now, slight dis discrepancy, it hasn't caught up. It's only 2.46, so it must have been 3.03, uh, but it's delayed again, getting caught up. SPI 2.16, FSR up 5.26, it was. Now it's down 2.06, so 
it is up in the aftermarket. And then CBAT, down 3.09, and it's actually down 4.23, so this is a little bit delayed again. So you can see that it does work. Now, uh, I'll show you the settings that I have for pre-market gaps. So if you look at the pre-market gaps, this is my pre-market gap setup. And the pre-market gaps you are looking for, I look for an average volume of between 500 and 50 million. Uh, pre-market gap, again, between negative two and I do the outside. If you're just looking for gap ups, you can change this to above and then just put it 2% or whatever your percentage is. Um, but I like the outside, so this is looking for the gap ups and the gap downs. Again, I've got common stock. I choose between 10 and 250. My pre-market now, here's the pre-market volume. I like it between, I want at least 50,000 shares in the pre-market for my particular scanners. And uh, then I choose my exchange. So once again, click the X, click on here, save your screen as, pick your name and hit save. So this, I mean, this comes with trading view. It's not an extra cost. Now, uh, if you don't have a pro membership or a premium membership or you're not paying for extended data, I should say. Uh, I don't know how accurate the numbers will be, um, but I do pay for my data. I pay for the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ on TradingView, so I get fairly decent data. Um, but yeah, it's one more opportunity for you to use a scanner that comes with TradingView. Now, uh, if you don't want to use the scanner on TradingView, you can also check out barcharts.com or again, look at your broker and see if there's any settings on your broker that you can set up for a scanner that's included with their package. All right, once again, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, throw them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know of the next video that I am going to post.